creating and managing local databases is a core component of most mobile apps. But whether you are using SQLite directly or through Room Persistence Library, Android developers have been asking for a better way to inspect and debug their databases in running apps. I'm Murat Yenar, a developer advocate in Android DevRel, and I'll be talking about the new database inspector. Android Studio 4.1 comes with a new tool called Database Inspector, which helps you inspect, query, and modify databases in your running app. With Database Inspector, modifying the data in your database is not much harder than editing a spreadsheet. And if you are using Room and observing the query results, the changes will be reflected instantly in your app. In this video, I'll test some edge cases on Sunflower app using the latest database inspector. Sunflower is a gardening app that illustrates Android development best practices with Android Jetpack. I encourage you to clone the repo and follow along as you watch the video. To add some plants to my garden, let's take a look at the plant list tab. On the top right, there is a filter button. When I press this button, a shorter list of plants is displayed. OK, clearly this button filters the plants based on some criteria, but I'm not super familiar with this project and I want to figure out how the filtering works by using the Database Inspector. To open the Database Inspector in Android Studio, select View, Tool Windows, Database Inspector from the menu bar. Now I need to run the app on a device running API level 26 or higher and then select the app process from the drop-down menu. After I select the app process I want to inspect, the database schemas appear in the panel below. To see Sunflower database tables, expand the databases Sunflower-DB schema. Let's go back to the app and take a look at the filtered plant list. The list contains avocado, grape, orange, and tomato. If I could sort the plant table by the plant name, it wouldn't be hard to find avocado. Let's see if the database inspector can do that. First, I double click on the plant table to display its data. The data is displayed with a default page size of 50, but you can reduce this number and page between a shorter list of results instead. Clicking on the name column sorts the plant table on the name of the entries. As expected, avocado is not far down the list, and I find it in the second row of the table. You've seen how to connect and display data stored in tables. Let's see how the tool handles custom queries. Looking at the data entry of avocado, the grow zone number is most likely the property which the app uses for filtering. To verify that, let's run a query on the grow zone number, which is 9 for avocado. Actually, this query already exists in PlantDAO, and I can run the query directly from Room's query annotations. Every query annotation has a small icon next to its line number. When I click the icon for the query of Get Plants with Grow Zone Number function and select the correct database, a pop up appears asking me the value for Grow Zone Number. I can enter a value of 9 and click Run to see the query results. Alternatively, I can type my own query and run it inside the tool window. This gives me more freedom as I'm not limited to the queries defined in the DAO interfaces. To run my own query, I collect the plants database from the newly opened tab on the right. Next, I type the query into the box next to the database selection dropdown and click Run. Here it is, we have the exact same list of plants as is shown when the filter is on. The database inspector makes debugging your app a breeze by allowing you to modify values in your app's databases while it's running on a device. First, let's say I want to test the app UI for really long plant names. Instead of changing the data source and refreshing the database with the new data, Let's edit the values directly on the database using the Database Inspector. Make sure the Live Updates checkbox, which we will see later, is not selected. 
double click on the avocado. And now that the cell is editable, change the name from avocado to uh, awesome California avocado and press enter. If you are following along, you can type anything you like with the length you want to test in the app UI. Now let's go back to the app. Notice that without us doing anything, the app is displaying the updated data. If your app uses room and observes the query results using live data or flow, you do not need to trigger a database query to refresh the data. Otherwise, depending on how your app triggers a query, you may need to relaunch the app or just navigate to the related activity or fragment again. In order to use the full potential of the database inspector, this might be a good chance to migrate your app to use live data or flow. Looking back at our app, it looks like the card view is not designed to handle such long plant names. I'll fix this later, but let's move on to the next test. Each plant has a different watering interval, and I want to see what happens when the watering day is past due. To do this, I need to add some plants to my garden. But first, I select the Live Updates checkbox in the Database Inspector. When Live Updates is checked, the Database Inspector automatically displays any changes your app makes to its database. Let's go back to the My Garden tab and add some plants such as avocado and eggplant. But first, go back to the Database Inspector and double-click on Garden Plantings to observe the table. Notice how the data in Garden Plantings table is updated automatically as I add new plants. Both these plants have a watering interval of 3 days. I don't really want to wait 3 days to see what happens, so I'll edit the database and change the last watering day. Once again, I go back to the database inspector and double click on garden plantings. The last watering day is the last column of the table. I'll change the values of both records to something smaller to reflect some time before today's date. Okay, it looks like I went a little too far back in time, but it should still work for my test. The app UI seems fine displaying the due date. For future development, maybe we can suggest adding a warning to the user when watering day is passed. There are other features we didn't have time to talk about, such as the ability to force databases to stay open without closing while you are debugging. The Database Inspector aims to help you to inspect and debug your app's databases. Go ahead and give the new Database Inspector a try. Let us know what you think, and if you come across any issues, please don't forget to file bugs. See you next time!